In the recent past, despite making products that might not appeal to early adopters or the enthusiasts, OnePlus's brand value hasn't diluted very much. On the contrary, I see more OnePlus users than ever because it has started attracting the masses with its Nord lineup, of course. Although today we are not going to be talking about the Nord series, we are going to be talking about the OnePlus 11. The series that started it all. I've been using the OnePlus 11 for over two weeks now on both my Airtel and Geo 5G sims. And spoiler alert, I think this phone is going to be a hit in the Indian market. Let me tell you why in my detailed review of the OnePlus 11, where I also compare it against its competitor, the Pixel 7. If you don't know me yet, I'm Aisha. They're watching Track and Tech English. Let's begin. Now starting off with the design, the OnePlus 11 looks like a cross between the OnePlus 10 Pro and the OnePlus 7T. When the OnePlus 7T launched with that huge circular module in the center, it had a lot of detractors. And I was probably one of the very few who actually liked that bold design choice. Overall though, personally, I feel that the design of the OnePlus 7T shows the company's relentless pursuit of perfection and refinement. And I also do like the design of the OnePlus 11. I think this circular camera cutout looks better than the rectangular one that we saw on the OnePlus 10 Pro and it sort of blends in organically with the whole design of the phone as well. In fact, while I like the color of the Pixel 7, I think that the camera cutout on the OnePlus 11 feels more organic and seamless compared to this, you know, wiser camera cutout on the Pixel 7, which kind of feels disjointed sometimes. And you know, that's just me. That's just my opinion and opinions are subjective. Your mileage could vary. Which one do you prefer? let me know in the comment section below. What's not subjective, however, is the materials used in the construction of the phone. You get a Corning Gorilla Glass Victus protection on the front of both these phones and a metal frame as well. But on the rear of the Pixel 7, you again get Corning Gorilla Glass Victus. But on the OnePlus 11, you get Corning Gorilla Glass 5. That's a tiny difference, but what matters is that the Pixel 7 also offers you IP68 rating, which is not available on the OnePlus 11. And on phones priced above rupees 50,000 or around that price range, I think that, you know, an IP rating is non-negotiable. By the way, talking about the Pixel 7, if you're considering buying it, YouTube has this new nifty feature where you actually have product links attached to a video itself. So go and check that link out. And while you're at it, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, do that. It'll be great support for us. Now, the texture and the back glass of the OnePlus 11 is glittery, shimmery, just like the iQOO 11. Therefore, it's also very slippery. But you get a case inside the box and it is a very good case as well. On the flip side, you don't even get a charging brick inside the box of the Pixel 7, let alone a case. By the way, the OnePlus 11 is, of course, a bigger phone than the Pixel 7 and therefore heavier too. But surprisingly, the weight difference is not too much. There's just this 8 to 10 gram weight difference between the two. And now come to think of it, for a compact phone, the Pixel 7 is kind of dense and heavy. The fundamental industrial design of both these phones is also definitely different because you get a flat display on the front, whereas you get a curved panel on the OnePlus. So curve on the rear and curve on the front, which then blends into a thin metal frame. Regardless, both feel extremely sturdy with great in-hand feel as well, and they ooze premium. Now there's another win for the Pixel 7, which I definitely must highlight. The Type-C port at the bottom is a USB Type-C 3.2 standard port compared to Type-C 2.0 on the OnePlus, which means you'll have slower data transfer speeds and problems with HDMI streaming as well. But on the OnePlus, you get the alert slider. I absolutely love it. Now, finally, talking about the speaker setup on both these phones, you get a true stereo speaker setup on the OnePlus 11, whereas on the Pixel 7, the secondary speaker is, of course, the earpiece. And OnePlus 11 also offers you Dolby Atmos support. Now, I did test them side by side. Both sound extremely rich, detailed, and lush, but OnePlus has an advantage and that is it sounds louder and it's got more volume in the low end. Therefore, it sounds much fuller as well. The Dolby Atmos is really working here. Take a listen for yourself and let me know what you guys think. The OnePlus 11 has a 6.7 inch AMOLED panel, which is an LTPO3 panel with 120 Hz refresh rate. Now, a lot of people were concerned about the fact that it doesn't have the latest generation LTPO4 panel, but it's not too much of a difference because you still get 1 Hz to 120 Hz refresh rate, variable refresh rate on the OnePlus 11, which is of course very, very well tuned. On the Pixel 7, you get a smaller 6.3 inch AMOLED display with 90 Hz refresh rate as opposed to 120 Hz. And of course, there's no crazy variable refresh rate that is possible on the OnePlus 11. So technically the OnePlus is 
display is slightly superior compared to the Pixel 7. Now, both these displays can also get very, very bright, especially when you're playing HDR content. The Pixel 7 can go up to 1400 nits as opposed to 1300 nits on the OnePlus 11. In regular usage, what I notice is that the OnePlus 11 gets slightly brighter outdoors compared to the Pixel 7. But then again, the difference is negligible for most people to care about it. And the color calibration of both these displays is very, very good with very low Delta E as well, which means that even if you wanted to edit a picture, you can trust it for the colors that is shown on the display, especially in natural or in professional mode. Now, the OnePlus 11 also comes with support for Dolby Vision apart from HDR10+, which was only available on Xiaomi phones before this. So OnePlus has also jumped on that bandwagon. But at the time of shooting this review, Netflix didn't offer Dolby Vision support, unfortunately. So I couldn't check out how it actually performed. But OnePlus says that an update is coming soon. Now, I did test a 4K HDR video on YouTube on both the OnePlus 11 and the Pixel 7 side by side. The highlight correction, the shadow retention, the HDR performance in general is so good on both these displays. These are top of the line displays that you can get on flagship phones these days. Now, there's one distinctive advantage on the OnePlus 11 and that is a touch sampling rate. You get an instant touch sampling rate of 1000 hertz and on the pixel the touch sampling rate goes only up to 180 hertz and actually when i was playing games i could sense that you know the touch responses were far more responsive and quicker on the oneplus 11 compared to the pixel 7. now since both these phones have an amoled panel you get an in-display fingerprint scanner oneplus is definitely faster at unlocking compared to pixel the haptic feedback experience that you can get from both these phones is of course top class in fact oneplus's o haptic even gives you the option to change the slider or the feel of the haptics based on your preference. All right, let's talk about the cameras. The OnePlus 11's camera setup is pretty impressive. You get a 50 megapixel Sony IMX 890 primary sensor. You get a 32 megapixel 2X telephoto camera and you get a 48 MP ultra wide angle camera as well and a 16 MP camera on the front. On the Pixel, you get two cameras, which is basically a 50 MP Samsung GN1, a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 10.8 MP, you know, selfie camera. Now I'll tell you this, if you want a detailed camera comparison, we already have one for you. So go and check Check that out in the link that pops up right now. But if you don't have the patience for another long video, I have a concise summary for you. So firstly, OnePlus 11's primary camera captures much more finer details compared to the Pixel 7. The Sony IMX 890 is just so good. HDR performance is also on par with the Pixel 7. Superb control over the highlights and shadows you can notice on OnePlus and Pixel both. The onboard dual HDR tech on OnePlus is clearly a winner. But I noticed an issue with warm color cast, which plagued a lot of my OnePlus images causing color sense consistency issues with the ultra wide and the telephoto. But it is not like the Pixel 7 was spot on with colors either. It often got a few colors wrong. Facial tones are accurately reproduced by the Pixel 7 and OnePlus 11 is generally warmer than usual. But then again, Pixel is, uh, you know, the gold standard for facial tones. But the crispness on OnePlus is unparalleled. Now, when shooting against the bright background, the OnePlus HDR tends to add a lot more bloom around the face, making the image look slightly artificial. Now, the major improvement in OnePlus 11's algorithm is the portrait mode, where you can clearly see better edge detection and depth mapping compared to the Pixel 7. In low light, Pixel 7 and OnePlus 11 expose the scene naturally with their respective night modes. But Pixel 7's images are cleaner with lower noise. And OnePlus 7 is undoubtedly sharper, offers better control over the colors, where Pixel adds a red cast, which is kind of difficult to fix in post and the OnePlus has better control over brighter sources of light as well. Basically better HDR in low light too. Talking about ultrawides, it is sharper on the Pixel. I have a theory that Google has been optimizing the 12 megapixel camera for so long and so well. Therefore, it is performing really well. And the color sense consistency, of course, is better on the Pixel. It's actually a gold standard too. But OnePlus's sharpness in HDR pictures with the ultrawide is better and the low light is also slightly better compared to the Pixel 7. Moreover, OnePlus also offers autofocus with the ultrawide that lets you shoot really nice close-up macros Pixel 7 doesn't offer that. Now, since you get a proper telephoto with the OnePlus 11, it is better than the 2X Super S zoom on the Pixel 7. My only grouse is that it should have at least been 3X, but we shall take what we get. By the way, OnePlus doesn't use a telephoto camera in low light. When it detects the surrounding is dark, it uses a 2X crop from the primary camera, which is still sharper than the Pixel, but I thought I'd let you know. Pixel 7 selfies are definitely better looking than those of the OnePlus 11s, no doubt there. Finally, when it comes to video recording, I think Pixel 7 does have an edge, but it is only a slight edge. The OnePlus 11 offers decent video recording in daylight. In low light video recording, both are equally good or bad depending on how you look at it. I saw focus hunting issues aplenty on Pixel, but OnePlus had more noise, but brighter footage. In ultra wide angle video, despite the fact that Pixel can do 4K 60 FPS, I actually prefer the 4K 30 FPS video quality of OnePlus because you get a wider field of view and the footage is not as warm as Pixel. It 
looks very good. But in selfie camera video recording, there is no doubt that the Pixel 7 wins. This is because you get higher quality 4K 60 FPS video recording as opposed to what 1080p 30 FPS on the OnePlus, which is a letdown. Overall, there were many high points while shooting with the OnePlus that it made me forget some of the lows. And in isolation, the OnePlus 11 is definitely a good camera, but the Pixel 7 is more consistent when it comes to shooting pictures. Although it's not like the Pixel 7 doesn't have its own share of flaws. If you want a sharp shooter with a lot of features, OnePlus is the way to go. If you want a more consistent shooter, Pixel is the way to go. Alright, let's talk about performance now. OnePlus 11 has your standard Android 11 flagship template for 2023. Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, UFS 4.0 storage and LPDDR5 x RAM. The OnePlus 11 is available in two variants in India. 8 128 GB and 16 256 GB, which is the one we tested. The 8 128 GB is available only with UFS 3.1 storage. That's something that you have to keep in mind. If you're wondering what's the great thing about UFS 4.0 storage, well, it's almost twice as faster than UFS 3.1 storage at read write speeds. And this this is definitely very useful, especially when you want to open apps, close apps, all of those things for sure, but also in camera performance because the read out speeds will be much faster. Therefore, the shot to shot speed on the OnePlus 11 has definitely improved compared to the OnePlus 10 Pro. Also, let me make one thing very clear, the Tensor G2 chip on the Pixel 7 is no match for the OnePlus 11. So if you want a performance oriented phone for gaming and better performance, it has to be the OnePlus 11 for you. The real competitor to the, to the OnePlus 11 is actually the iQ 11 because that one also has similar specs. In Android, the iQ 11 had higher scores compared to the global variant of the OnePlus 11 that we tested. But in Geekbench, OnePlus 11 beat the iQ 11 and we got the best scores that we've tested on an Android phone yet. We also run a CPU throttle test, but not that 15 minute test that everybody runs on YouTube. We run a proper 40 core 30 minute test and the OnePlus 11 managed a score of 80% stability where iQ 11 managed 82%. These are minor differences and the takeaway is that the CPU performance is generally not throttled on both these phones in regular usage. Although in the GPU throttle test, 3 Mark wireless test test, which I really like, the iQ 11 performed better with better stability score and lower battery drop. But in real world gaming, I noticed that the OnePlus 11 actually ran much cooler than the iQ 11 when you're playing games because the iQ 11 tends to get slightly hot around the edges after the 30 minutes of Apex Legends, which didn't happen on the OnePlus 11. This could also be because of the cooling chamber tech that you have inside these phones today. Overall, both these phones are good for gaming, but iQ has a slight edge with that flat display and of course the extra gestures that you get with it, which sort of enhances gaming. And of course you get that V2 chip for frame rate interpolation in games, which could come in handy as well. Like I mentioned, both these phones are great for gaming and I've been playing a lot of Apex Legends on these, you know, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 phones and my gameplay has generally become much better. Now, another thing I noticed in regular usage is that the OnePlus 11 generally offers better RAM management compared to the iQ 11. By the way, OnePlus now offers a new TUV Ryland 48 month, you know, fluency rating, which means that the phone will run for four years without actually dropping in performance levels, which is very, very good to know. Now you must have noticed that the iQ 11 generally offers slightly better numbers when it comes to benchmark performance, but I really love the way OnePlus has tuned the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 because it balances for battery life as well. And oh boy, the battery life on the OnePlus 11 is fantastic. So I ran the phone at QHD plus resolution with 120Hz refresh rate and I got a screen on time of 6 hours and 30 minutes. And with FHD plus resolution, I got 7 hours and 1 minute. This is not only better than the iQ 11 or the Pixel 7, it is the best we've tested on a flagship phone in the past two years, beating even the Motorola H30 Pro and the H30 Ultra. OnePlus, good job. You also get 100 watt fast charging speeds on the OnePlus 11, which I think is good enough. It can charge the phone from zero to 100 in 25 minutes, which definitely makes it faster than the Pixel 7 for sure. Also, if you're worried about, you know, because of this fast charging, the phone will heat up or the cable will heat up or the charger brick will heat up. It actually doesn't happen because OnePlus has this real time temperature monitoring thing. So it sort of levels it. And that's definitely something that is appreciable. One advantage on the Pixel 7 is that the Pixel 7 offers wireless charging. So when I was in my car and which offers a wireless charger, I was sort of missing the wireless charging feature on the OnePlus 11, but otherwise I don't care for wireless charging too much. Now talking about network performance, I got great 5G performance on the OnePlus 11 with speeds going upwards of 1 Gbps on Geo. And of course, call quality is fantastic too. No complaints whatsoever. The one reason I'm genuinely happy with the OnePlus 11 is because Oxygen OS 13 is actually really good now. It's built on top of Android 13, of course, and it adds a whole bunch of features that I feel enhance user experience. Before I talk about that, let me also remind you that OnePlus now offers four years of software updates and five years of security updates on the OnePlus 11. Currently, this phone is 
running the December security patch, whereas Pixel is actually running the January security patch. Also, one more thing I must highlight on the OnePlus 11 is that there are zero unwanted pre-installed apps. The experience is very premium flagship. Also, in my time with the phone, I faced no bugs whatsoever. Pixel 7 owners have been complaining about a lot of bugs that they have been facing on their phones. So bug-free experience is also very, very good. Now, talking about the features, I genuinely like that new clipboard feature. So whenever you copy something, there's a clipboard that comes up and then you can go and edit it from there itself. Additionally, in the always-on display, you get Spotify integration and live delivery information integration as well, which is definitely useful. This is just me scratching the surface with respect to the features that are available on Oxygen. Oxygen OS 13, you've got the great Zen mode and uh, uh, you know the customization features. There are a lot of cool features that are available. Let's not forget even stock Android's features. Like one of the things that I really like now with Android 13 is that new visual indication for you know music playback when you slide down the notification slider. That also looks very very good. All right, the OnePlus 11 is an impressive update over the OnePlus 10 Pro. It is a proper comeback to form for the brand, and I'm convinced that even some of the disappointed users that might have left the brand behind would come back and be appreciative of the OnePlus 11. Compared to the Pixel 7, I'd say the OnePlus 11 offers better battery life, better performance, better 5G performance, better quality speakers, and of course, a bug-free software experience too. Even the display on the OnePlus 11 is superior when it comes to the tech that is generally available with the variable refresh rate, Dolby Vision, all of that. The Pixel 7's only advantage, I would say, is that it has slightly more reliable cameras. That's about it. So between these two, if anybody were to ask me, Ashad, which phone should I buy? I'd say the OnePlus 11 is the pick for you. Only if OnePlus would have given us IP rating and 4K video recording from the front camera. And thank you OnePlus for listening to all our feedback and improving and of course making a phone like the OnePlus 11. Now keep that momentum going. Well, what do you guys think of the OnePlus 11? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Let me know in the comment section below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until next time, keep tracking and stay safe.